Welcome to the Tarlan Community Garden. We're hoping today to do some short video clips to give you an idea of the community garden and what we do here. Now this is for the Tarlan Food and Music Festival that normally happens at the end of September but sadly as with everything else at this strange time we've had to put it online. So our open day is going to be online this year. So let me show you around. We've got a few people here that are very um, uh, happy to talk about their their activities here and what they do here um, um, and we'll also show you a little bit of the, the garden itself and what goes on here. So here we go. Um, this by the way is our beautiful sign that um, a local uh, lad did for us um, and made and that's the ethos come on through of the garden is to encourage people to grow their own local produce preferably organically if, if they can and it's also to um, provide a social focus for local folk who are interested in, in growing their own fruit and veg uh, so we can all learn from each other so there's some beginners here and some people have been doing it for literally donkey's years so we all try and help each other um, and also we try and be an inclusive and accessible garden so we've got uh, things like wheelchair access and such like. So at the garden we have both outside beds and inside beds and you can see our outside beds there's uh, 34 of those and um, each member has an individual bed that they are responsible for and they grow their own vegetables on and around the edge you can see we've got some fruit trees there, some espaliers, um, which are actual communal. Um, nice windfall coming on that nearest one I can see. Um, and they're, they're sort of looked after by the whole um, garden community. Uh, we also have inside beds inside the polytunnel. So over here I'll show you that in a minute. And as well we have a beautiful area uh, half perennial flowers which are communal which I have to say our retired members are actually um, superb at maintaining and looking after for us retired as in retired from work not retired from the garden and we also have our aromatic area which has got the herbs and the other nice smelly plants um, going over a little bit now but you can sort of get the idea of it's a pretty lush and profuse display earlier in the summer and also on site we have over there our shed, communal shed where we can get a cup of tea, sit out and have a cup in, in the sun and over here we've got our compost toilet which is actually twinned with a compost toilet in a remote area of India I believe so when we built this uh, we donated um, money uh, to allow a uh, sort of a similar type of toilet to be built in India um, which is quite important for improving sanitation in the remote rural areas in India. Okay so coming forwards now towards the tunnel. This is our compost system. We've got three three bins on the go so this is our active one that's been filled up at the moment and um, this one's our compost that's ready to go on the beds and uh, the one in the middle is the compost that's um, just cooking nicely and then over here we've got some pole frames for members to use if you want to bring plants on in the spring and this is our fruit cage area um, also, we have some beehives there, which uh, the Tarlem Bee Group um, uh, bring along, and uh, you know it's a very useful addition to our garden because obviously the bees are providing a brilliant pollination service. Uh, so it's it's a really good um, mutual relationship between ourselves and the bee group. Okay, so now we're going to have a look in the pollen tunnel. And yeah, this is the polytunnel, which at this time of year is looking very jungle-like. Starting to go over a bit. A um, number of things are finished, but as you can see, even though it's early September, there's still quite a lot left here. So if you yeah, 
have a look at this bed in front, immediately in front of you. This is one of our communal beds, and we've got things like Australian tea tree and fennel growing there, and there's a fig behind. Um, and then the rest of the beds are the individual beds. Um, each member has a, an individual bed. And there's 29 of them in here. You see we've got a fantastic tomato crop going in quite a few of the beds. Um, and over to the, to the side we have a... These beds are um, for wheelchair... Uh, they're at wheelchair level, so we've got a couple of wheelchair level beds as well in case wheelchair users want to use them. So this is Andrew's bed. Um, it's got an amazing display of um, oh, wonderful exotic um, vegetables and um, maybe Andrew you'd like to show us, talk about what you've grown this year and how you've got on with it. Well I should say right away that I haven't grown anything in this bed, although it says Andrew and Isabel, all the work behind it is my wife Isabel. And uh, she just happened to send me down today to, <laughs> to water the plants. Um, Isabel has uh, had a very productive season in the raised bed. It's looking quite empty now, but she had uh, three tomato plants and they all bore fruit, these little um, tubular tomatoes, and gave tremendous trusses. These are just the end of them. She has uh, five jalapeno uh, pepper plants and she had two aubergine plants and we just have one of the aubergines uh, maturing here. I think in all she got about eight aubergine fruits. Along the back of the bed she has a, a squash and I think we, she has about, had about four squashes off the, that uh, plant. Uh, the one plant has done very well. There we go. You don't happen to know what particular I don't know the variety. variety. Isabel could have told you the variety. Yes, yes. One of the things that's absent from the, the bed now is uh, she had delicious French beans uh, around the perimeter and she had a great success for the first year with celery and it was interplanted with all these plants here. So in all it was a very productive season and now at the back end uh, we're just looking at the the peppers reddening up to have a little crop of them to make some nice red jalapeno uh, uh, jam that's for the wonderful. winter time. That's that's very inventive actually to you know to uh, jalapeno jam. Now that's something I've not heard of. Yes, it's, it's delicious. Is delicious it? with the uh, meats and and yes. things like that. Yes. But yeah, I think we've been she's been very lucky this year. Yes, it's, uh, it has. It's been. Just, a, Super but I, all credit has to go to Isabel. Right. I just occasionally get sent down under instruction to do a little watering. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you. Good for you. I'm glad you came this afternoon. Yes, I'm happy Thanks. to do that. Thank you. It's a super facility we yes. have here and we enjoy having the indoor bed uh, because we have quite a big garden and have raised beds on the outside there to look after. Yes. Anyway, all power to the group. Okay, so we're at Anne's bed just now and Anne is one of our newest members in the garden. Hello. Very kindly <laughs> agreed to tell us about her bed as well. So do you want to give us a little tour? Um, well, I'm very much a beginner. Uh, I, this is my third summer, I think. Um, it's been trial and error for me. Some things have been good, some is a disaster, but this year has been a good year for me. The tomatoes have just taken off. Um, there was loads down here. We've been eating tomatoes for about three weeks now. So um, it's keeping us going and healthy. There's some cucumbers in here. Oh yes, oh, yes. Wow. Um, nice. they've, they've been doing well too. Um, look, look at these. Oh, I can't. There's, there's some round that side as, as well. <laughs> They're just, it's done really, really well this year. Mm. And then we've had peppers. There's uh, the bell peppers that's in here. Um, I haven't picked them yet because I'd like to see if they change colour to give me a yellow and a red one. This year I tried some melons and I got some seeds from uh, a colleague down in the corner and this is, they started off really well and this is how they've ended up. So this is one of my disasters this year. 
Um, the other one is still growing. It's not so bad, but this one it just hasn't recovered. Hasn't done anything. So I asked the person that gave me the seeds, and something similar has happened to theirs as well. So it made me feel so a was that, a bit was that better. Geordie, was it? Yes, it oh, was Geordie. Well, Geordie's yes. one of the most experienced gardeners. Yes. And, <laughs> you know, if it's fail, then... Well, I don't feel so bad don't now. Feel so bad. But Sylvia has melons in her bed, and they've... They look delicious. Uh, okay. actually. Yeah. It's, so she's um, she's managed. so she's got the magic touch uh, for the melons. <laughs> for the melons. <laughs> okay. and, but no, it's been quite good, and the tomato crop's been quite good. And I had sort of runner beans here, but they've all gone now. They yeah. came to an end. That's it was impressive. I mean, you had things climbing up to the ceiling, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, they were right up at yeah. the top. Yeah. Sylvia's bed now. And now Sylvia is one of our most long-standing members at the garden and one of our most experienced. Mm -hmm. um, and as you'll see, she's got an amazing crop of onions here and she's going to, in a minute, tell us about them. She's just feeding her tomato plants and yeah. peppers at the moment. But um, well, don't I, ask me the name because I don't know it's okay. Sandy knew that. But I, you you grew the onions outside, is, is that right? Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Yeah. And tell, always grew outside. So, yeah. what? When do you bring them in? You, you, why have you brought them in? Actually, just for the benefit of those who perhaps don't do much gardening, why why, no, why have you brought them in? them. You've got to leave them out. Take them up, and then leave them out until they're dry, and then take them in down that way until they're all ripened right that's how you ripen that's how you ripen onions okay if you try to store them before that they don't store so they they would go what slimy and wet they and would just go rotten go rotten yes, yes. yeah so they store them somewhere store. nice and dry yes so how long for how long would you store them well, I, I used my last onion in January this year. Did you? From the last, from the previous Didn't summer? Before, yeah. Depends on how sometimes they store well and the next time they don't store well. Yes. Last year they stored really, really well. The year before they didn't store well. Yeah, yeah. So we just had to kind of use them, we can. So, so, so it's a bit hit and miss, which it's I think miss, is yes. very typical With everything, of gardening, it's hit and miss. I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> when you're doing things, it's hit well, and miss. All of us here, yes. Always. Even experienced people like yourselves. Always um, hit and miss. Yeah, yeah. But this year, I think you've you've said just before we switched the camera on, this year you've not actually had any disasters. Nope. But, um, I think you said. No, we had good excellent. cucumbers. We had super cucumbers. Had lovely courgette, this little yes. beastie cards. And it still didn't stop them this year. Got the white fly. Mm -hmm. So that, that will be on no, which really? plants with the. <laughs> no. All of them. <laughs> okay. They're on the Gadaga white fly. Yeah, yeah. Just a blooming pest there. But, uh, but otherwise. Especially the Italian tomatoes. They seem to be washed. Oh, really? The Italian tomatoes yeah. seem to be washed. They're quite susceptible. Yes. But I mean, otherwise, you've had a pretty successful year. Yes, yes, we're melons, yeah. look. <laughs> oh, yes, and we, where's the melon? We need to see that. Look, now, Anne was melon. very impressed with, your, with the melons, because um, Anne had a bit of a disaster with her this year, but she said yours have done brilliantly. Aye, well, they've come. They weren't as big as they were two years ago, though. Right. Oh, they were like that. They're just uh, that size this year. Oh, they might be come away. Yes, brilliant. And, uh, and when you um, eat them, are they, you know, are they kind of really taste, are they Lovely. better than shop melons? Absolutely. Really? Perfect, so yes. like tomatoes, <laughs> homegrown, always better, yes, aren't they? Yes. So the melons are the same. The melons was absolutely beautiful. That's, that's great. Because actually, you know, what is really interesting that um, it's the climate up here, for the benefit of those who perhaps aren't local, is quite well, extreme. And to be able yeah. to grow melons up here and, and successfully, I think, is, is a real yeah. achievement, isn't it? They, they are a little littler this year because they were really big with two big beauties last near last year year before but last year they weren't a success right yeah depend it on the on the weather yeah completely yeah. on the weather yeah. so that's yeah so it must yeah. have been a good melon year well thank you sylvia very much for You're very um, welcome. talking us through your oh, well. lovely <laughs> bed. Um, and yeah, well, good luck with those onions. I think you've got quite a few to get rid of. For my bed, which is actually my bed. Um, do you the darkness are looking at Kenya Shaw's here? Well, do you oh, think I should have it. pulled them up by now? Um, you know, cut but them you back. Can't wait to sort of they are. Brand they are. Um, I do actually, found, but I've got it written down at home. 
Or the second earlies? They are um, a mix of main crop and second earlies. So what, should I take, cut them back or leave them in? What do you think? Well, you've still got a flower, you've still got a flower in your tatty, so once that wears off, yes. I would cut them down. Cut them down, I okay. Cut them down, I. Because I, I put a mix of main crop and second early in, and to be yeah. honest, a bit of a mistake, because I can't remember. Have you mixed, you mixed them up? <laughs> I, well, in different rows, okay, it's easy, don't I should have yeah. written it down which rows, because I can't remember which is which it's now. Easy, so, um, so I just left them in case I'm I didn't sure want to get them. Right again. Brilliant. Oh, okay, thank you, like thank you. And, um, and I'm, I've got some... Carrot, I have to say this, um, my carrots have done brilliantly this year. Normally they are very little yeah, to write home about. Well. So I actually re sowed them three times because it was too cold in April and then May we had really warm drying wind. Yeah. So I tried again and um, and this is actually what has, what has come up. Oh so I'm God. very, very proud of my carrots this year. First prize at the Horticultural thank you, Show in thank Dallas. Thank you, Although, sadly, we say. didn't have it this year. But, I know, um, sad this year. It was it. sad, but never mind. We did have a garden competition. Next year, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah, we can no do problem it. at yep, all. Yep. No bother. So, well, thank you very much for advice. And, well, Frank is one of our long-time members and does an awful lot here in the garden. A lot of maintenance for us, a lot of the regular jobs, and we couldn't do without him. So, oh, thanks a lot. thank you very much. Is that sprouting broccoli? It is. Oh, it's it looking is. good, isn't it? Yeah, I'm yeah, hoping yeah. to get a good crop early spring. Yeah, you should do. So I'll put that in yeah. uh, early summer, just for plugs. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully come next spring that'll be... And that's last year's, which I haven't actually, as you can see, I'm a bit of an untidy gardener. Uh, it's finished, I haven't taken oh. out yet. But uh, I left the flowers in, actually, for the bees for quite a I while. I mean, it's all right for myself. I've got plenty of time, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Uh, people working at yeah, yeah. Trying to find time in the to, garden is a bit yeah, more Yeah, to nip you know? down, so, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah but I, I think untidy can be good sometimes. It's good for the yeah, wildlife. Exactly. Right. We're in Frank's bed now. And um, Frank's got a really fine display of parsnips here. Um, and some, I think, black currants. Yeah, that was black, some crop this year, was black it? currants, oh my goodness. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I was giving them away, yeah. telling everybody to help themselves, you know, <laughs> yeah. it went down well. Couldn't get, couldn't yeah. get rid of them fast enough. There's gay beer now, like, but it's, yeah. no, it's yeah. fine. So, now, um, the parsnips uh, are nearly ready, but to be ready, they actually need a touch of frost. Mm -hmm. And that uh, takes a harness out of the parsnip. You know? Oh, does it? Uh, uh -huh. Okay. So I've been built. So you need to leave them in, really, until... Well, you've got to leave them in until... Quite, the... quite late, then. Just November? Yeah, well, you can do... Yeah, well, you can pick them during yeah. the winter. Yeah. You know? But you can leave them in over winter. And sure. then pull them out when you want. Yeah, that's as right. As long as you yeah. can... Get them out. I mean, for the benefit of those who perhaps don't, again, I've said this before, aren't familiar with the climate up here, we yeah. do get very heavy frosts. We once got a frost of minus 22 about 10 years ago, yeah, as I can remember. Yeah, that's right, um, that's and right. the ground actually goes solid and it, you can't get anything out. Yeah, you sort of need a pickaxe, really, don't yeah, you? Well, <laughs> yeah, <I> yeah. <laughs> so, so you kind of got, you know, you either get your, past, your, your root veg out earlier and yeah. risk it not having that nice sweetening up I guess or you risk leaving it in and not being able to well, get it out. Well parsnips they're kind of really stuck in the ground and you've got to need a fork kind of like a grape just to yeah. shake them up. Yeah. Them up. Right yeah so it's quite an effort. Quite oh, nice. and I see you've got something very odd looking over yes. there. Now, I'll a... move down and um, we'll bring the camera around a bit uh... to have a look at that. So tell us about that. Now that's a call rabbi. It's right. a cross between a cabbage and a turnip. Is it? And, uh, and a turnip. You can uh, oh for your gut. Cook it, fry it, you can do anything yeah. with it, you know? Yeah, boil it, I should say. And uh, you can cut it into chunks. And stick it in the oven. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, it's kind of like roast that is. Yeah. And uh, what sort of taste does it have? Well, it's a funny a thing. It's a, a cross turnip. between. <laughs> it's a cross between a cabbage and a turnip. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's got 
two of that sort of taste. Yeah. You know? It's very popular in Germany. Is it? They yeah. They go for it quite okay. a lot there. Because it, it sounds you know? exotic, it looks exotic, but when, when it comes to it, it's actually a cross between a cabbage and a turnip, which yeah. is, is staple root crops up here <laughs> in Scotland, doesn't it? So, uh, you know, um, which is rather surprising. So. But it's very, but as I say, it's, it's very popular in Germany. Yeah, they yeah. go for it in right. time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that that's looking. And is that quite a big one? Do you, would you well, think? the thing is, I've left it in too long, uh, okay. and you should actually harvest it when they're quite small. Uh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, it's actually past its best now. Yeah, yeah. So you uh, need to get it up. Yeah. It looks like a mine. It does a bit, doesn't it? Like mine. Mine. <laughs> well, that, that's great, and that's a very uh, productive-looking bed. And um, just generally, Frank, what do you get out of? Um, you know, the community garden. I mean, oh, you're the here an awful lot. Great. I mean, it's really sociable people up here. Yeah. And uh, everybody helps one another. Yeah. It's a nice sure. If I'm nice sure, I can ask somebody. Yeah. They'll tell you, you know. Yeah. So it's really good. Yeah. 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 And you do, and and you know, you and uh, Jordi and Sylvia and Sandy, you know, are are sort of regular. Um, older members, you know, that just spend a lot of time here. Older, I said, yeah, like I didn't old, say old, older I said also. older. <laughs> um, you know, very, I really, um, you know, put a lot of time in, not just in helping with the garden, but also, yes, helping the others, perhaps less experienced members. It's, it's a very sociable um, atmosphere. Yeah. So, well, yeah. This year, there's been a, a couple of gardeners who haven't been able to come up. Right. Because they've got underlying health problems. Yeah. And, uh, Jordi and myself have been looking after our bed to spend two Yeah, yeah. We did not Yeah, no, that's that's grand. Yeah, that's yeah. grand. I've, yeah, no, that's that's great. And you know, it means that they've got that continuity now next year to come sure, back. Right. Fingers crossed. Yeah. You know, start growing again. Great, well thank you very much Frank for that. You're and very uh, see the sun has indeed. now come back out again just when we stop. But <laughs> very well. Okay, thank you very much. Uh -huh. And here we are on the community garden in Thailand. <laughs> Happy days. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> <laughs>